Welcome into the PHNX Cardinals podcast presented to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Gentlemen, that uh, opener against Kansas City, it is mercifully over for the Arizona Cardinals. They suffer their second consecutive blowout defeat dating back to last January when they lost to the LA Rams, eventual Super Bowl champion. Today, uh, I know the spread had ballooned up to six and a half points in the Cardinals. Well, they made uh, quick work of that, losing by double digits yet again. Uh, a demoralizing performance, to say the least, Frank Sanders. It was not pretty. <laughs> it was definitely no, not pretty. No. But at, at the end of the day, you still have to come back and say it's kind of what was expected in regards to the idea that you could have, you had to be a total optimist to think that here's a young team in the Arizona Cardinals who did no preseason play. None of the veterans or the young guys went out and actually played in the preseason. Um, well, there's a couple of guys, uh, Greg Dor- Gregory Dorch, thank God that he play- had some preseason play because he actually made some plays. But in reality, I mean, we had to see what our defense was going to do versus, again, one of the top offense in the NFL, one of the two of the best minds in Andy Reid and um, Eric Bieniemy. So that that in itself was there. Mahomes was great today, and uh, there was it just wasn't a pretty showing um, for our for our first opening game. Da Damian Anderson, what did you see that made this game so lopsided for Kansas City? I mean, I guess to just comment what Frank said, I am an optimist, Johnny, and I know, I know that you're dejected. I just feel your energy. Oh man, yeah, has so completely. Frustrated. I mean, look like, at the chat. We're all, we're all upset. Ha- has gone from your body, uh, <laughs> but for me. I wasn't expecting the performance that we saw today to be out coached, to be outplayed. And it wasn't, in, in meaning it out coached, I wouldn't say like, because I don't feel like the guys weren't out of position, Frank. You know what I mean by that? Like, where they'll call a play and the guy is nowhere in sight. However, today the guys were there, but they just didn't make the plays. I'd agree. So for me, it wasn't being about being out coached. It was like you saw calm composure with Patrick Mahomes. And what the game looks like, you saw elite talent. You saw, I would just say, elite coaching people. That it, it just seemed like a team that had been there before. Yeah. And with the Arizona Cardinals, it appeared as though it was their first time. Yeah, it, it definitely looked it like, appeared as though it was their first it time. It looked playing. like the first game of the Cliff Kingsbury era. It looked like this team had begun the rebuild. This is year four, gentlemen, of the Arizona Cardinals' reign under Cliff Kingsbury with Kyler Murray. And listen, I get the frustration. I have the frustration too. This is a team outside of, you know, the Hollywood Brown trade, you know, we thought was a nice draft. We'll get to that in a little bit. They didn't do anything in free agency. They made zero minimal impact free agent signings in March. They saved their money. And we know that they use that later this offseason to re-sign their own. They got Kyler Murray extended, DJ Humphreys, Jalen Thompson, Marcus Golden. So, you know, I understand trying to keep your own. But this is a team that lost marquee free agents. They lost Christian Kirk and Chandler Jones and Chase Edmonds, right? And then to be overly reliant, and it was such a gut punch today because I did not think J.J. Watt was going to be inactive. I still thought he would come out there, rah-rah guy, play a limited snap count. J.J. Watt, gentlemen, I don't think you can argue it, has been a major disappointment for this team, a huge bust of a free agent signing. Mm. You think about missing the second half of last year and then – having what equates to a cupcake training camp for the Arizona Cardinals. Nobody touches nobody. Nobody touches anybody. And where's J.J. Watt? He's making the most money on the team, Frank Sanders. And you look at what I thought was the biggest gut punch for this team today. Yes, the secondary could be better. The front seven is so below average right now, lacking in premium talent. And Watt was supposed to be the glue guy. And instead, you got your ass run over by Kansas City. I'll take the defense side. I'm pretty sure yeah, you can definitely talk about it from the offense perspective and how that, that front four, our, how our front five look uh, offensively. Defensively, look, we don't have the talent. We don't have the names that no. we thought we would have. Last year, we, 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 everyone, we could come into the regular season knowing that we had Chandler Jones, we had J.J. Watts, we had Phillips. We had names and we had Jordan Hicks. We had guys with names that we thought – that were, you know, at least experienced veterans that had made plays and that once they got together, they would go out and, and and jail together as a unit. This is a young, very, very young front front four when it comes to our, our defensive line. Just front seven, actually. Zayvon Collins, Isaiah Simmons, those guys. Uh, it's just, they're, they were not ready for what they faced today. Honestly, like they, when you, it looked when, like when you look at Kansas like they City, were, we were starting 11 rookies on Well, and, and, it, and, it, and it, had, it had that merit in some areas because – Kansas City has their entire front five back offensively. And so those are the things that just it makes it makes it makes everything that much easier. 
our guys are young. I will say from what I saw defensively, I, was, I wasn't necessarily disappointed in the scheme. I wasn't disappointed in the call and the play calling. I wasn't disappointed in, you know, the disciplines it took. And, and like, like you said earlier, DA, that there were guys that was there. They just didn't make the plays. And so I wasn't disappointed in that because – and we'll dive into that a little bit more, but I just – I just think that we got outplayed because their guys have more experience. Our guys are much younger. Their guys have you to my you to my guys that have gone to AFC championships, guys that played in the Super Bowl. That's experience. That's time. And that and that and sometimes your youth cannot get that without enough reps in in game time as well as in practice. But but Frank, I would say like many fans, I think we all have the expectation. Like you as well have the expectation. This team is going to be competitive. It's going to go out there and not be a six point, not have six points going into the game and then show up like they did today. To me, it starts with the line of scrimmage. Whole, whole hand, the, def, the defensive line, the offensive line of scrimmage. Yeah. Obviously, they had they could run the ball at will. And we saw that towards the latter part of the game when they just kept going down there, finding scores. And it seemed like the Cardinals didn't have an answer. And whether it be J.J. Watt is going to be the, the key to that success, it ought to, it all ways takes me back. Guys have to come out there and make plays, Frank. They do. You know, at, at the end of the day, you get a check and you have the opportunity to, you know, I, Isaiah Simmons and Buda Baker can't do everything for this team. You know, I mean, even like as I talked about a little bit earlier, Patrick Mahomes made every aspect of the game. Like almost, he almost anticipated blitzes. He knew where to go with the football. He looked very comfortable in his rhythm. And I would say in contrast to Kyler Murray, when he was doing that same thing, he looked rattled. You know, when he besides him taking well, off and getting first downs, yeah. I think early on it looked like their timing and it would eliminate his options for where he was going to go with the football. Let's talk about the offense, but quickly, Sean Mark says in the super chat, thank you so much, Dollar ninety nine. <clears throat> At least House of Dragons is pretty dope. Listen, brother, I'm going to watch it on demand <laughs> later tonight. I'm crying in my sorrows, pouring over episode this, four. this terrible box score. Yes, sir. Episode four. Um, but you know, we'll save HBO Max for a later date. This is PHNX Cardinals, and and DA, you mentioned it. I I. I'm a Kyler Murray apologist. Um, did I think he played his best game today? I do not. But think about what the Cardinals asked Kyler Murray to do when compared to Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes has a superior offensive line. They've flushed his receiving core talent. The Cardinals have tried to do that, yet A.J. Green's out there looking like a corpse, right? You don't have Rondell Moore. Rondell Moore gets all of the reps in practice on Thursday and then goes down, and you have to slide Greg Dorch in there. But I think that that was equivalent. I felt that way. Well, no, oh, Dorch was fantastic. That's a, but that's what I mean. Like, so, okay, so Rondell's not playing. You got Dorch in there. You still got Hollywood. You have A.J. Green. Mean, you got like, Zach Ertz. I just mean, miscommunication and the fact that the offense wasn't clicking all For cylinders. Sure. Agreed. Like, Ertz has not been practicing. Yeah. Justin Pugh bailed. Tell him how you feel, John. Like, where was Justin Pugh today? Practice all week. And then he was he just, he didn't, neck. just didn't play today. He had a like, neck. Rodney Hudson, to me, I tweeted this out during the game. Like, looks like he's retired, even though he's out there playing. Like, you have two of your five starting offensive linemen that, in my opinion, this may seem harsh, feel checked out. Like, and they're making huge cash. Like, Rodney Hudson's making eight figures. Justin Pugh's making good money, and one was not available, and the other one just got dominated by Chris Jones. And you traded a premium picks for Rodney Hudson, and then Ertz is barely practicing, so he barely plays. The egregious decision, gentlemen. And I've watched Trey McBride in practice, so I feel like I have legs to stand yeah. on here. To not activate Trey McBride and then have that shit show offensively for three quarters, it, like get some young, like well, look what Greg Dorch did for you. Young legs out there running routes. Hollywood Brown looks good. Play the young guys. If you're going to do this where the veterans are not going to practice, then they're active over the young players, and then they, they don't make an impact on Sunday, that's so frustrating if you're a Cardinal fan because not only are you losing – by 20 plus points, Frank Sanders in week one. Yeah. But you're not playing your best player. You get the young guys' experience. Like, I'm frustrated with the defense, but I guess, like, silver lining, at least Isaiah Simmons, Zayvon Collins are out there. At least they're learning. That's what you wanted in the first place. You I want, do. You want the young guys out there taking the L. I mean, I don't want to say it like that, but. You want the young guys. You want the young guys out there getting real time experience. But guys, Sometime, we're talking. We're, sometimes we're, that's good, and a lot of times that's but bad. But, Frank, we can't be having these conversations during the season. Right, like that, I mean, we, that, we that's not. that's preseason. Well, not for a team that you expect to be great, for sure. And we we're talking about progression with Isaiah Simmons. He's a guy calling the plays, and it just appeared as. And don't get me wrong, respect to every man that has stepped foot on the field in the NFL to, to wear the shield, to play the game, wear the helmet, whatever. All I'm going to say is that I didn't think Juju Smith-Schuster was elite, and for him to go out there 
and do some Frank Sander esque well, moves in and out of cuts, in and out of breaks. He made he made our all stars look pedestrian. Can we talk about Isaiah Simmons quickly? Because everybody like is up in arms about it. Isaiah Simmons is not a good football player right now. He's an average player. He wasn't today. Let's just say he wasn't today. Right today, Isaiah Simmons and whatever this new role they've created for him, and we will be patient, they're going to give him, God willing, 16 games to figure this out, was not good today. Isaiah Simmons was the eighth overall pick. He was taken over Tristan Wirfs and CeeDee Lamb and other players. I mean, it's just, it it is what it is. (laughs) They thought they were having this. You remember, you guys played. But Zavin was first round too, no? They thought they were getting... Patrick Willis kind of esque linebackers in the first round, and the linebackers they have right now are borderline liabilities, and it was shown today. So much so they didn't play last year. They didn't. Neither one of them started the Rams' playoff game. You fast forward to now, they have been forced onto the field. Whether that's right. because the GM said Jordan Hicks, no, we have to play the young guys. You know, Nick Vigil is not a threat. For better or worse, these are the guys that we're going to roll with. I think, fingers crossed, they just especially for Zavin, he has not played enough live reps. Like, I need to see Zavin all season to be able to make a judgment. This is year three for Isaiah Simmons. If not now, when when is it going to happen? Because this was the day, gentlemen, you need turnovers, you need picks, you need passes defensed, right? He's this unicorn from Clemson. He can play the slide. He can rush the passer. I mean, he... I would not that, be surprised. You look at the pro football focus grades tomorrow if he's one of the worst graded players on the team. Johnny, and, he, and he will be because he's a fish out of water right now. Like, you can't that, have that conversation, you though. You can have that conversation. We did the same thing with Hassan Reddick. But, but is he, and though? So, yeah, yes, he Frank, is. Frank, he he's is? A, he's a fish out of water, bro. So, like, so uh, let me, let like me, Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons. If like it's he, year three, we can't Isaiah be saying Isaiah Simmons that. was covering five foot nine, four three. He, shoot, uh, Juju. He was covering he, tight ends. And, and was not good. And was, it wasn't so good. So where should he be? I, I'm asking it you. Just good. like, where, where should saying, he be, Frank? I'm saying based upon what his athletic, he's, he's rangy. Yeah, his success. He's got body. Make him gain some weight. Put some muscle on him and put him on a defensive end and let him be an outside edge rusher. Let him mm. be that guy. So he can use the talent to get around his speed and his quickness and his arms. He's long, he's rangy. But if you got him trying to cover guys I would you say that ain't it. That's not it. I would <laughs> I would eat Isaiah Simmons. Mm. Period. Mm. You, you would, yeah. What about Zavin? What about Zavin? Zavin is his, he's supposed to be in his right position. He's supposed to be a Mike linebacker. You're talking about a guy that won multitudes of awards. You, you as, wasted as, his rookie his position. season. So I you I don't gotta say, play him. I don't you gotta say, play him all year. I don't say wasted because he's sitting behind Jordan Hicks. We saw Jordan, Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks a play. He he's a play. football so player. That's we just gotta let our guy that we gotta let these two guys grow. I just say that when it comes to Isaiah Simmons, he's a fish out of water right now. They haven't found that yet. They haven't found that out yet. You're trying to make him into a. He faced face. He, he plays. He 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 faced. Excuse me. He faced Kelsey today. Like that's the elite of the elite the tight best ends. The best in the game with the elite quarterback. But you you drafted there's, there's, him for, to be elite. Excuse me. He is, is not elite. There there is no buts when it comes to who you got to face in your competition. This that, game will that, expose that you. That is, this game will expose you. The game you. will expose you. And that's what you're supposed this to is do. Not, this is not some free do, agent that they signed. Sorry. This is not some developmental pick. Johnny, he don't was matter. No, no, pick no, but, but Frank, I'm, I'm with Johnny on this, where I just think if you look around the league and it almost played out like it's supposed to, you know, the, the good teams won, bad teams didn't, or if it was close, right? But when you look at, like, if you were Detroit, you almost expected it. If you were Jacksonville, you expected it. However, if you're an Arizona Cardinal fan and you talk about the signing of all these offseason uh, deals of Hollywood Brown extending, you know, uh, offensive lineman, Kyler Murray, all this expectation built up on this team, you're disheartened. You're hurt because you had a certain expectation that you were going to go out there and compete against Andy Reid, go out there and compete against Patrick I, Mahomes. I feel and that like, didn't happen today, it, Johnny. It feels like they had so many guys out based on the inactive list today. I feel like it was they, over before it started. It feels like they waved the white flag. They said, we don't got Watt or Pew. So are we overreacting? And are we are we just saying and they said it about Watt. It's uh, game one. Like I, Adam Schefter tweeted this out. It's like Cardinals are playing the big picture deal with JJ Watt. And it's like, guys, we get it. The team fell apart at the end of last year. But the reason that they even got in the playoffs, they started seven and oh. These early games matter too. Like, and the Cardinals go to the Raiders and then host the LA Rams. Like Conceivably, like these are a couple must wins now coming up. You can't but, start look, 0-3. But if I'm a Joe fan, guys, if I'm Joe fan, yes, you Joe fan. I'm, I'm Joe fan right now. I'm Joe fan. Okay. Well, you had the whole damn off season I to did. get healthy. Yep. Eat, eat, take your vitamins, and it's and why makes it hard on himself too because he's Mister Rah Rah. 
posts and stuff on social media. He's a dog. He is. He's a dog. And you want to embrace him. But then you look at, he's making $17 million this year. He's the highest paid player on the team. It's week one at home against a marquee team. He's not available. Well, if you can't go, you can't go. I mean, unfortunately, it's not. I know, but it is what it is. As you know, it's not your time as God's. Say, right. can I get a holly? Hey, Amen. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> so I mean, although go. the fans want him out there, yeah. and we want him out there, right. if he, if, okay. if you got that pull, and you can't, you know, there's a talk, Johnny. If you're hurt, or if you're injured. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, you know, he might be both. Unfortunately for the Arizona right. Cardinals, I want to remind everybody: be sure to smash the like button. We're going to do a post game for every game this year. Hopefully, they're in uh, much better spirits. My two co's, myself, yes. we've got Bo Brock. Live from State Farm Stadium in a little bit. But I want to remind everybody, DraftKings today, if you put money on the Arizona Cardinals, uh, plus six and a half, like me, you would have been a big, fat loser. But thankfully, uh, hopefully many of you took advantage of the many promotions on DraftKings. And yeah, the first week is here. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. It's hooking up fans right now. New customers can bet just $5. It's another game tonight. You want to dabble and you get $200 in free bets instantly using that promo code PHNX. And at an added bonus for week one, everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. It's simple, folks. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use that promo code bet $10. If your team, excuse me, wins, uh, leads at any point uh, by 10, you get paid instantly even if your team loses. That's promo code PHNX. Only in the DraftKings Sportsbook minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See those show notes for details. All right, gentlemen, diving into the box score today. uh, Kyler Murray stats look probably a little bit more polished than they otherwise did through three and a half quarters. Some garbage time touchdowns to both Hollywood Brown and Zach Ertz. Uh, James Conner only got 10 carries today for 26 yards. I thought the Cardinals got away from the run too early. It really felt like the turning point, gentlemen, for the game was Dennis Gardeck, Gets that force fumble on Juju Smith. It's 20 to 7, right? The Cardinals get the ball right back after a wasted possession. They do nothing, have to punt it back to Kansas City. Kansas City then gets a field goal before half. Here's a super chat. I want to remind everybody, or excuse me, uh, say thank you to Brandon for the uh, super chat there on the screen. Let me pull it up here on my end. Uh, hang on one sec. Kyman Cliff for five years is going to be one of the worst moves in franchise history. They were never in the game. Well, to, to my point, Brandon and I would argue that at the end of the half, if the Cardinals put points on the board and they turn it from 20 to 10, 20 to 14, and then they get the ball in the second half, DA, maybe it's a different story, but you wasted that strip sack of Juju, or excuse me, that forced fumble of Juju in the open field. Kansas City goes down and gets points, and that's kind of all she wrote. I'm going to bang on the defense, but the offense no-showed for a couple quarters in that torpedoed them yeah whether it was timing johnny whether it was you know sacks and or you know muff snaps where they weren't on the same page in terms of the center quarterback exchange and timing we we talked about this this team is heavily leveraged leveraged offensively yeah so you have an expectation they're going to go up there they're going to go out and put up 25 to 30 points per game Mm -hmm. almost look like what you want is what we've seen from Patrick Mahomes and company today in yes. terms of your offense, to be able to run the ball, to be a balanced offense, and just make the game look fun. That That's what it appeared. And I think that, you know, we have to pump our brakes. There were, you know, I think that there were some good, right? Like, we know that Hollywood's not not playing. Kyler, when he did have time, he looked like he could throw the ball and throw yeah. the ball well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg Dortch is a player. Yep, Hollywood yeah. Brown. You know, Still we're seeing we're seeing some pieces. Yeah. Obviously, he's a great you know is a great player. I would have liked to see the tight ends get involved a lot earlier, but Absolutely. it seemed like they were behind on downs often early in the game, and they didn't have the firepower to match. They didn't have an answer for Patrick Mahomes and company. Well, they could, felt, they could do like, what they wanted to. It felt like Frank that the Cardinals forced it offensively <clears throat> because they felt like, and this was true, they had to match Patrick Mahomes score for score. Well, you, you definitely have to keep up with the, keep up with the Joneses in that situation because if you don't, it's going to get ugly. They, our, our offense, um, it's it's not their offense at all. They they literally had a hell of a game plan against us, and I say this respectfully because you guys watched the game when we blitzed. There was a lot of opportunities yeah. where Patrick Mahomes uh, dumped the ball off yeah. and he got the ball out of his hands pretty fast. That's an indication to big plays, that, Frank. I mean, but to make to right, big to big plays. But here's the thing. Game plan wise, that's what you're supposed to do when you know you have a team <clears throat> that has the blitz to put pressure on our quarterback. 
And that's exactly what they did. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do when you have those situations. The opposite, the opposite end of that is that you're going to play a lot of zone because you don't need you don't need to get pressure. Your front four can get pressure on the quarterback yeah, that was by itself. Happen, that's not our case. We yeah. can't do that. So that was one of the main reasons why I said that. I'm okay with some of the things in the game because when you take our entire preseason, which was null and void between offensive linemen not playing, no Rodney Hudson, Justin Pugh, they didn't play, they didn't pray, they barely played. Do you think practiced. that was the biggest difference maker, though, friend? Absolutely, man, because there's things that come into play where you're – The you, physicality, they missed that look, today? Chris Jones is in our backfield more. Kyler was running for his life Cor- in a lot I of agree. areas. And so, and, and this Patrick looked like wasn't. the Rams playoff game. And they right. didn't have did. to blitz a whole bunch. Johnny, it did. And so, it did. But guess what? They took the playbook of what – what work versus us if we don't if we don't if we don't put ourselves but Frank in they got to win those one I'm, I mean and I'm a, I'm in agreeing with you it's, it's Chris, I'm, a, I'm Chris agreeing Jones with you four time Pro Bowler I wouldn't he say just, that it was scheme that beat us today it wasn't scheme it was man on man one on one mano on mano right and, and you saw that with, when they they were just pushing guys back guys look I am an optimist when it comes to watching teams come from behind and winning you know my history got nine years eight years with the Cardinals. I got multitudes of comeback, comeback victories. But in reality, the situation is sometimes the players that you have don't match their pieces. And game plan wise, they had a, a great game plan they versus did. our defense. Well, and and, that, and I'm just saying, like when I say I'm, I'm not mad at Vance Joseph in a lot of ways mm-hmm. because I felt like he he made the right here, calls at right times. But th- that dump off ball is a nullifier. Yeah, that that, that little quick shot to your tight end. Is a neutralizer. You could make an and argument. That's game planning is it, is it, versus that situation. Is it Vance Joseph? Is it the personnel? I would argue it's both. I mean, I tweeted this out. The Cardinals have given up thirty plus points 50, 50? in four of their last six games. Guys. They have not been good defensively, dating back to last year. Now it's a new year, Johnny. We're talking no, about last. This no, is a new I, year. I, I, I'm it's taking a new Vance year. They, they got out athleted today. That, hey, that's what hey, happened. It, when, I mean, when, when situations, if it's one on one, you got to make a play. You got to make a tackle. You saw. The Arizona Cardinals get out athletes. They got pushed back. They got pushed up front. The line of scrimmage dominated on both sides. The most frustrating thing, I think, for Cardinal fans is we have been given our medicine when it comes to these top picks, and they just they aren't flourishing yet. Like mm. Kyler Murray hits, boom, you think we're off and running, and then it's Isaiah Simmons. I, right now, I would argue Isaiah Simmons' eighth overall pick is probably trending toward being not an outright bust, but underwhelming. Zayvon Collins, right? It, it, the, the the angles he was taking on some of his tackles today not did good. not look like an instinctual linebacker. Well, again, this is the same. This is the reason why you need preseason play, so you can so get why, used to but that. Guys, it but guys, Frank, it ain't his first time playing linebacker. It's not, a, it's not his first. But it's, <laughs> I wanted to look the first natural. time playing linebacker at this level. <laughs> Fair at this enough, speed. but you know, and if a running back is running inside zone, I'm sorry, bro, I'm, I'm like, here's the problem it, though: the it, Cardinals. You look for guys. The Cardinals D, play. D is a running back. You look for guys like him. You look for running. You look for linebackers that will take that one wiggle and then he automatically jumps outside and you back inside. The Cardinals you play in the NFC that. West That's and they young. play the AFC West this year. They do not play in the NFC East. They do not play in the AFC South. They have to have players that are ready to go this year. There, you can't have this narrative that, well, we're just going to kind of wait through this and see what no. happens. That's where the Cardinals failed Isaiah Simmons. They didn't play him as a rookie. They pulled him too much last year. Same with Zayvon Collins. All this shit with his their growing pains was supposed to be done. So and what, now it's not done. And Steve Kime has forced the issue clearly because they didn't. They cut Jordan Hicks. They could have afforded him. They're, he says, play my draft picks. Well, we're playing them now, and it doesn't look good. And I think everybody's to blame. I think Kime's to blame and Vance and the players. I'm glad, I'm glad you said that, Johnny, because I didn't want all the focus to be on Isaiah you know Simmons and I don't have the box score score right in front of me, Johnny. If you could pull up the stats, we had just, one tackle at half. Okay, okay, but I'm I'm just gonna say there was some you know plays that could have been made, and as I said, he got out athleted. However, there were a lot of you know missed tackles, yeah. guys making plays, and it started all up front. Getting that push, the running back just having a day, being able to rush the football. Uh, Patrick Mahomes never looking like he was uncomfortable in the pocket. That's not all Isaiah Simmons. No, it's not. You know what I mean? That's not all Isaiah. And we talk about the the importance of, you know, yes, if J.J. Watt's in there, maybe we're overreacting. It's the first game of the season. Hopefully we're not. This is how they start, but not how they finish, and they make a complete 180, right? And we're we're, we're talking a different uh, feeling come week 12, 13. That being said, today, a lot of of chickens came to roost, Frank. Absolutely. In terms of – 
our concern with the defense's ability to stop the run, our concern with you know facing an inability or lack thereof no of a corners. defensive secondary, yeah. and them just having when Valdez scanning and I, uh, I forget the other guy, but Juju Ty- Tyreek Scout, yeah, they, they're missing all their key players from last year, and, and it didn't matter. These guys just come in and just look like they're. Uh, they, like they've played together. They, the 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 Kansas City Chiefs look like they've been together for twelve years. But in they, terms of offense, look, all those guys have played and they play in the same system. The receivers from that or that's on their team. They got Travis, but you got a great quarterback. Like these guys ran. They ran crossing routes. But Kyler's a great routes. quarterback. They ran. I believe that. They Kyler's ran, a great they quarterback. Ran pick, they ran picking routes Fair all day long because so, he had time. Though you need but, time for that. But the idea for development. Is that if if you you have to know like when I scout our team. That's the best thing to do versus our team. You ha- when I scout our defense, like Lance rub Joseph, routes. You're saying you rub to, routes. You have to run rub routes against our team, and you have to put guys one on one in situation. There's a lot of packages they gave us. They motioned guys to see if we was a man to man in zone. The quarterback sat back and literally. But they did also the a lot of misdirection, I, and so too. And, and that's the reason. And so because here's what I don't want to hear. Our teams well, not disciplined. We're, we're just discussing the first game. Not what you're saying, but here's I'm what saying, I don't want to hear just next discussing week. The first, next week, I don't want to hear. Well, Trayvon Mullen didn't play, or Antonio Hamill didn't play. I'm sorry. If that's the secret sauce to this defense, then we've got big problems. Guys that are making next to no money for this team. Trayvon Mullen just got here an hour ago. That was not the reason the Cardinals lost. They had the entire offseason, gentlemen, to put this game plan together offensively and defensively. And they got cute, and they said, we're going to play Jalen Thompson at corner and Buddha and Isaiah Simmons. Well, maybe Vance and, and Steve, maybe you should sign some corners. You know, Robert Alford is still available. He played pretty good ball for you last year. No, 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 We don't need to do that. We're going to just mix and match because we've got all these elite tweener athletes, right? And then Kansas City is like, okay, you need real actual defensive back play and pass rush help to be able to stop us. Chandler Jones is gone. J.J. Watts, MIA, right? They did not invest in the pass rush at all. They cut Devon Kennard, and they said, they're, we're going to play the young guys. Well, they brought him back. Maje Sanders, inactive. Cameron Thomas, no defensive snaps. And they they talk crazy. out of both sides of their mouth, DA, and it's, it's so frustrating if you're a Cardinal fan because you, you want to embrace, right? They've improved. And I am not typically Mr. Negative, but today yeah. I am not going to put uh, – this is not, you know, with all due respect, the team site that's going to put on a, a narrative like, well – we well, you know, take them as they come, blah, blah, blah. That was not good today. We all saw it. Frankly, it was embarrassing. I do think they will bounce back next week against the Raiders um, because the Raiders aren't Kansas City in part, but also typically when teams get blown out, uh, D.A. Yeah, they got a, they got a, what, the, what, the best receiver in the league and well, somebody just got an extension. Waller? Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, yeah. if this if this Josh is, <laughs> if this is what we're getting every week, buckle in. But it's, Hunter it's Renfro. I, I hope it's not. Probably. But in the meantime, you can check out our brand new studios here at yes. PHNX headquarters in downtown Phoenix. Check out our gear here, morefurniture.com. Fantastic. Couldn't say enough good things about hook up, up hooking up the entire office with these nice, comfy couches and chairs that we got to see the Cardinals get their butts kicked. And uh, Bo Brock was there, front row center with the media today. He will be live from State Farm Stadium here in just a few moments. But for now, gentlemen, I want to tell you about the easiest and most fun way to spice up your football season. It's Underdog Fantasy. We signed up this morning uh, before the tailgate show. It was a lot of fun. My team is in second to Saul Bookman. You hate to see that. Just look for your favorite player or players. Stats, pick between two to five for your pick them entry and whether or not they'll end up with the higher or lower total stats in week one, you'll get your picks right, and you can win up to 20 times your money, which is fantastic. Uh, again, signed up this morning, had a ball, Underdog Fantasy. You can search the App Store, click on the link in the show, mo- show notes, use that promo code PHNX, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to 100. So DraftKings, Underdog, we're hooking you up with here at PHNX using that promo code PHNX. Annex. All right, get to some of these comments here. You mm. guys are are plugging them in fast and furious. We appreciate that. We'd also appreciate smashing the like button right now, subscri- subscribing to the PHNX Cardinals podcast. Up. We do this show at least yeah. five times a week. Your premiere is on a Cardinal podcast. Cutting through the bowl. We're here with you and the fans. We talk about what you want to talk about. Uh, and I think Serena says a good comment. At least the Niners and the Rams lost. And we assume that it's going to be a clean sweep tomorrow, I'm guessing, when the Denver Broncos beat up on Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks. So if you want to look at the glass half full, uh, Mr. Frank Sanders, Cardinals conceivably can get through for, uh, week one, can burn the tape, mm-hmm. not lose any ground 
in part because unlike uh, the San Francisco 49ers, they lost out of conference. So that doesn't affect any future tiebreakers. Um, as embarrassing as this was, you're, at least you're not Trey Lance and company losing at Chicago when everybody's talking about that team being a Super Bowl team. Cardinals can just lick their wounds and move on. They can. Uh, losing in the NFL affects you three ways, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Mm. It never messes with you financially because they don't get their checks on Monday regardless. So that has nothing to do with that. But mentally, emotionally, and financially is typically how it affects you. And the winning aspect as well. But when you lose, you got to look at yourself. You're going to go back and watch the film and say, what did I do right? What was the play calls at those times? Um, what assignments did I miss? That's the mental stuff. Or was I ready to play? Did I get myself ready to play? Did I was I did I look at my training and I looked at myself in the mirror by outside when I got I, when I got past the preseason? Was I ready to meet head on head on with the Kansas City Chiefs and bring my energy and effort? That's on the table, and that's sometimes you got to look at yourself. And the men in the room will have to do that because they realize they got they got smashed and got pushed around, and literally they just the game plan was there for Kansas City. They looked like it was easy, like they had fun, like this was week 12 for them and week one for us. The emotional side of the game, how do I bounce back? What, you know, was I ready to play? What did I, Was I looking at those guys with, with big eyes and glasses like this is the Kansas City Chiefs? And I, who is the Kansas City Chiefs? Was that part of me? Because you got a lot of young guys that still, I think they're that, fans, I think that definitely was part they're of, fans of yeah. these guys that they played against. I know when, my, when I first, my first year in the NFL, there were some teams I was a fan of that I would not go sit down to the bench, uh, go to the bench and watch because I'm still a fan. But until I realized that, that I'm at now I'm at that level of the NFL. Now I need to play. I need to ball out because now I have that job. And the physical side, that I just was I physically ready or that I physically just got beat. And that's something that these guys will look at and take a hard long look at. Guys, like we could talk about the X's and O's and all those things, but and it, and it comes to play. But that guy is going to ask himself, did I do my best? Was I at my best? And mentally, was I prepared? And so when they do that, DA, they're going to have a chance to kind of, you know, rectify the situation, and then we'll see what next week looks like. Damian, let me ask you a question because there were, there were a lot of, a lot of <clears throat> negatives today. There were some positives. What concerns you the most if you're a Cardinal fan? Just the defense. And I would say the, the ability to stop the run and corner depth because, as you mentioned, John. It sounds like all these things from last year. Like they weren't addressed, yeah. In like, the offs, like like they just kind of put them on the back enough. burner, right? Fair enough. And so I, the defensive, does the front seven or the secondary concern you more? I think the front seven looks worse than the secondary because at least you've got Buddha and Jalen back. There. Front, front, yes. But I mean, you know that one goes with the other, right? The team's ability to to run the ball it just makes you question everything. And when you're anticipating run, that's where they go over the top, and they had so so much success like they did today. And I wouldn't say that the NFC West, with the exception of the Rams, are, are, are going to have those abilities, yeah. right? However, the AFC West will. Yeah. <laughs> and they have All to see <laughs> Russell Wilson. They got to see Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert and Carr. And they out there slinging it with great specialty players. Yeah. And yeah. to me, is J.J. Watt, or, you know, the guys that you mentioned on the secondary, Johnny, that were, you know, inactive today, are those guys enough to um, and the and the offense being with Hop? Okay, let's call a spade a spade. Is that enough to play better? I mean, don't get me wrong; it's going to have to be right. It's going to have to be better than what we saw today. But is it enough to be competitive and take this team into the playoffs and win roughly Frank Johnny eleven to twelve games? I, I would I would hope to see I would hope to see that <clears throat> I expect to see this team get better. Last week on the show we was talking and I and I was I mean I was chiming in like I don't think the Cardinals going to win and. Then at, at the end of the day, I, I I came I came round I came full circle and said I believe in Kyler, and I do I honestly believe yeah, in Kyler. Yeah, I don't think this his and, performance today. And, and I don't I don't think it was great. I don't I don't think it was great. Or he was it was, it was he totally had, bad. He didn't he have a, he didn't have a chance early, guys. No, he didn't, he didn't have so, a chance early. And the like, if you don't have a chance and your defense is getting torched, yeah. not dorched, because he had a day today too. Right, the kid could play. You know what I mean? He, he the Greg Dortch, shout out to Greg Dortch. He had he stepped up he in a major the, way. He was the best part of the game today for me. He and how Eno you know, Benjamin Eno, ran yeah, I was gonna say in Eno. the fourth quarter. Greg Dortch came came back from the dead off the depth chart and risen amongst the Cardinal ranks and took advantage of his opportunity for sure. And was the most Respect. consistent offensive player the Cardinals had today. He got screwed on that incomplete pass, which was a completed pass, which I also thought would have changed the game when he went up and got the ball. Yes, did he slip on the on the fourth down play? Absolutely, but I, to me, like he's going to be a very. I think the Cardinals. I'd be more concerned if I if 
with AJ Green out there looking slow, two catches for 13 yards. Like, but there weren't many targets, John. There weren't. I you just, know what I mean, like, it feels weren't. like the Cardinals needed to lean into the run game more, and I thought they were going to, like, really heavy double tight end. And, and just allow Kyler to use his legs and run James Conner three yards in a cloud of dust to keep Kansas City off the sideline. Mm-hmm. But where they where they got in trouble, Frank, is these consistent like three and outs, yeah. and the defense just came and, and gave up these 10 to 12 play drives. I mean, Kyler and company could not have the kind of offensive day that they had to be able to it, it wasn't It wasn't pretty offensively. I th- I'm with you. I thought we were going to be a little more aggressive with the two tight end situation. Max Williams likes to play, so I thought that was going to be yeah, another I opportunity. Thought, let's run downhill. To, to, and, guys, and then, I don't think they had enough. I don't think they had a chance. I think that was probably like the game plan. But I think the times when it was third, they were they were behind the the, the chains and third and long, and they tried to pass, and it was situation. Kyler got either pressured or sacked, and then they had that one bad snap. So for me, I think they they that was probably the game plan. But as you guys know, shit changes quickly, especially when the team is scoring like they Cliff are. Just, he can't help himself. He loves. He wants to throw the football. And here, to his credit, Hollywood and Greg Dortch were consistently open. Uh, it, it, the only time, really, that Kyler got flushed in the passing game was when there was interior pressure, and there was a lot of it today. Yeah. Rodney Hudson was not good. You've got Sean Harlow playing left guard out of position because Justin Pugh not available. That's a really unfortunate gut punch. The Cardinals courted Justin Pugh to come back out of retirement. Same with Rodney Hudson. When you do that, gentlemen, when these guys are just – Probably coming back for a paycheck. They're, they're, that is but that, that is not a good place to be. They're, they're just not, not in game shape. Hungry. They're not in game shape. So, well, well so this, it's, so this it's was, September. So, That's so the time to do literally it. Literally, this what happens. Like we literally talk about this in the locker room, and we we have to have this expectation as a player. You have to have this expectation. A guy doesn't practice a whole bunch. He has he doesn't get a whole bunch of reps, but he wants to go out there. If he ain't that dog, then. Uh, or you don't watch him and practice where he's really physically doing all his drills and his drills at a hundred percent and he's coming off injuries or bad shoulders or ankles or whatever it is, they're not 100% right now. I'm, I'm literally saying you, this to a, a No, I a get yes. you, Frank. you got to do football. You have to do football to, to, to be, be good. ready for football. <laughs> yes, it's not being good at football. football. You can't go yeah. through the you motions and go over for four. You got to do, do football. Do football, yeah, yeah, to be good at football. I always say sure. this here. We talk about, you know, we we could do this stuff on the, with our chats, and we can talk about this on Twitter, and we can hit that. But there's somebody on the other side of the football field that's want to whoop your butt. There's somebody Grown on the other side shit. of the football field that wants to murk you Grown and make shit. you look bad. Like, they don't just want to get you to the ground. They want to sit on you. Because you know what happens when we get back to watching film? And they try, they're trying to show, embarrass you. Show the film, yeah, coach. Yeah. Show the film. Because this is their first-round draft pick. I think and, and that's, for Cardinal fans, though, Frank, it's, it's, it's a double way. I mean, because the first-round picks are not playing well, and then the veteran Band-Aids that you signed, the big-time free agent ticket yeah. items – are either not playing or in Rodney Hudson's case, they are not effective. And then you see Greg Dorch, who's undrafted, making no money, and Eno Benjamin, seventh round pick, making no money, out there and mm. doing their best. Like that, Facts, yeah. that's frustrating. I want to thank Awful's Office Max, uh, dollar, or excuse me, a 99 cent super chat. Thank you so much for that. That sounds like Awful <laughs> Office Max. Mouth face. <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, Make sure everybody hit that like button. That would really help out the show. Johnny, how, really how about Karloftis, though? All right. Listen, oh. I dogged George Karloftis all draft season. I didn't want the Cardinals to touch him. I, I I would still rather have Hollywood Brown. I will give it to him. He looked good today. But it's like Kansas City, you know, they had two Y'all can't round. win at everything. No. You know what I mean? They're like, winning at everything today. Come on Damn. Now. Damn it. But yeah. I, I think – Kansas City, do I think Kansas City is as good as they showed today? Probably not. I think a team mm, mm. with a more experienced defense probably holds them to, to 30 points. Do I think they're going to be one of the favorites to get to the Super Bowl? Of course. Do I think the Cardinals can still get to the playoffs, make a postseason run? Absolutely. Yes. Number one factor, they have the right quarterback. They're in a division with an influx of inconsistent quarterbacks. Matthew Stafford's elbows messed up. The NFC is awful. Did you guys watch the NFC today? It's terrible. Everybody was freaking out. They thought the Carolina Panthers were going to run away with well, that. Let me division. let me ask you that same question you asked me, Johnny. What what's the biggest concern you got? And then same front, to you, Frank. The front seven. The front seven looks terrible. The defensive line looks average. Even with Watt, I have concerns about that group. I had concerns about that group in the spring. With all due respect, like I love Rashad Lawrence and Lucky Fotu. Like they should not be put in a position to anchor the defensive line. Zach Allen, he is what he is. He's a he's a, a solid player. They have no elite front seven players period right now 
End of story. There's no Calais Campbell. There's no Darnold Dockett. There's no Carlos Dansby. There sure as hell is no Chandler Jones. The closest thing they have right now is Marcus Golden. And I love Marcus, but he cannot be your best piece of your front seven. And right now he is. Devon Kennard was just cut. He's starting for you. Simmons, Collins, we went through it. Not great, right? The defensive line is trying, attempting to be saved by a 33-year-old J.J. Watt potentially one year away from retirement. Like, that, that's a problem that had had to be addressed in the offseason that was not taken care of. You get premium front seven players, specifically the ones that rush the quarterback, penetrate from the inside in the draft. You draft and develop those guys. They're typically not available. Cardinals just, how many times, right? Robert Kimdichie, not, not a good pick, right? Hassan Reddick, out of position. You let him go. He, he leaves permanently to Carolina. At the end of the day, like, to me, the front seven hums, just like it did at the beginning of last year, Chandler Jones, five sacks in game one. This this team took off, and it fed off of that. And the secondary, Frank Sanders, that was inexperienced, starting Marco Wilson as a fourth-round rookie, still okay. flourished because the front seven took care of business. And Kyler Murray and Hopkins were humming. The offense will be fine, but man, oh, man, they're going to have to win a lot of games, 35, 28, yeah. you know, 37, 30. This defense, to me, unless some of these young players – you know, I was really impressed with Dennis Gardeck, but unless some of these young players blossom and blossom quick and they get coached up, I don't know if that's possible with the Cardinals' schedule. They are not playing teams that have middling quarterback play. They play a gauntlet of teams with Pro Bowl quarterbacks, and and they don't have the talent and the horses in the front seven right now. It, um, last year's team at the beginning of the season was much better than this year. This year's team, correct. <clears throat> and so we saw we saw we saw the fruit of that. That's why we were eight and zero, and we were literally competing and dominating a lot of the teams because we had we had a lot of our weapons that was there. I mean, we had offense and defense. We had weapons. Our defense could get pressure on the quarterbacks on other teams, make them throw to get the ball out of hand a lot faster, and therefore our our DBs looked looked so much better at the beginning of the season. And then we hit a bump. This year, starting off this season. My concern is that we just don't have enough play time. Like I, I really have to go back to that because I think there's a part where, again, there's a lot of in, there's a lot of people that's hurt and injured, and we talk about that. When you're injured, you're not practicing. Um, the NFL has so many strict rules on a whole bunch of things on what you can do and how you can practice and those things that are totally different how it used to be in the in the, in the back in the days. But now, I, again, these guys just they got no game time, no real game time, and that to me disturbs me because the NFL moves extremely fast. And the only way you're going to really get up to speed and to really see where you are is to see it in real time. And a lot of, I mean, that to me is my concern because we got young guys that are trying to figure it out. We got guys who are plugging and playing and putting, putting them at different positions that to me feels like they're just not set and solid. These are guys that were moving around to try to create pressure on quarterbacks or, I, and we got, we got receivers that we're trying to move around like that. That to me, um, we're not at our best right now, guys. So why am I, why am I an optimist? Because I see that we're not at our best. Uh, athletically, we're not at our best. The like coaching, the players I, are not at their best. And so to me, I can kind of hold on. I can hold my breath a little bit right now. I think we both feel like the, the offense it will get can carry this team to the playoffs. The offense can get this team to nine or ten wins. And the defense just, they have to be better than they were today. Like, at the end of the day, like, you, you just, you, you can't play much worse, Damien, on the defensive side. We've got another super chat here. Awful's office match. <laughs> Again, thank you so much. Dollar ninety nine super chat. We are trying to get Bo Brock live from State Farm Stadium. Uh, producer Emma, thumbs up or thumbs down if that's happening right now. We're gonna we're gonna hold off on that, but I'm gonna tell you right now, we had a hell of a time yesterday at Four Peaks Brewery for the ASU watch party. If you came out, mm-hmm. hung out, had some Four Peaks, we're dabbling some today. I've got my Four Peaks Peach Golden. It is bomb. I'm enjoying it. Frank's. Uh, enjoying the Red Lager, Redbird Red Lager. We had some this morning at the PHNX tailgate. If you came by the Lola in downtown Glendale across from the stadium and said hello, we greatly appreciate it. Four Peaks, of course, is the official brewery of PHNX. you got to be 21 and older to enjoy responsibly. And I want to remind everybody, we're going to have events the rest of this year. Come out, have a good time, but we want you to be happy and healthy. COVID-19 vaccines are free for everybody five and older. Those 12 and older are also eligible for a booster shot, what you got to do is you got to visit azhealth.gov, find a vaccine location near you. All right, gentlemen, as we await Bo Brock, um, you know, I I think about 
the fact that this is Cliff Kingsbury, Kyler Murray's first week one loss. And it also feels like the first loss or the first game of this new era of Cardinal football, for better or worse, right? Because you think about there's no Jordan Hicks, there's no Chandler Jones, a bunch of veterans left this team. Jordan Phillips is gone, right? They got younger on defense, Damian Anderson. And I, I think I have to take a step back and remember Victor Dumakeji's playing his first meaningful NFL snaps, right? right? We talked about the two inside linebackers. The entire defensive line is made up of youngsters right now. I thought Marco Wilson played pretty well, given all things considered. Was the best defensive back on the field for the Cardinals at times. Everybody wanted to dog Marco, and, and he was out there balling out against the best quarterback in the world. So do can I reserve some judgment because the Cardinals are so young? I think yes and, and no, Johnny. I okay. just think that it, it just feels bad because it's week one and you had a, a certain level of expectations. We all had a certain level of expectations. We knew that they were maybe undermanned or or it, it would be difficult, but you felt good about the guys going in and, and being competitive. And I don't think that the inability to see that today is why this hurts so bad yep. in terms of being a Cardinals fan. The inability of seeing the offense be competitive early on, Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray being Kyler Murray, yep. and just the, 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 the hot toys that he has, yep. right? Like, Hollywood Brown being Hollywood. Zach Ertz going out there. I mean, I think that he had his first catch in the second half. Same goes for A.J. Green. Yep. So the lack of just in a, or the inability to get those guys the ball and them be stars and Kyler be stars. And then the offense, I mean, defensively, as you talked about, just that front seven, them to, to do whatever they wanted to at will. And granted, every team in the National Football League is not the Kansas City Chiefs, but parity is a bitch and it's going to be tough. I mean, I know that we've talked about it at length. You know about this this team schedule this year and not having you know is I guess there's the, no room to breathe, right? There's no w room to breathe, and, and will you say are they that much of a different team with D Hop and Watt in I, the game? I, I think they're 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 definitely better um, for sure. Hopkins keeps drives alive, and I think that in this specific game, the game itself probably would have been one to two possessions closer. Do I think the Cardinals win? Of course not. Hopkins can't play defense. But in those critical games this year, when the Cardinals are going to need, you know, just pressure, a big Johnny. catch here and there, I, I would Pressure, say, catches, yeah, everything. Yeah, that, I mean, he, he, ma he, he makes up the Cardinals. He makes them two or three games better, in my opinion. Office Max, another Super Chat sticker. Thank you so much. 99 cents there as we await Bo Brock. We're trying to get him live from State Farm But real Stadium. quick, guys, do you think it, it? maybe we are overreacting because it's the first game? There were so many guys. I don't know if we're overreacting. There were so many guys out. You know what I mean, Frank? There was a reshuffling of the offensive line. Uh, you, you had, obviously, D-Hop's out. Uh, Rondell Moore is out. And you, you had the defense. You know, T.J. Watt's not playing. You know, guys were sick this week. Do you, is it a situation where, like, hey, man, we didn't have a chance this week. It was over before it started. Craig Morgan, these are how my pants are supposed to look. Thank you very much. My wife already complimented Damien's pants, by the way. She sent me a text message and said, tell Damien I really like his pants. So she's, so Craig's throwing me shit. My wife's telling me that she likes my co-host's pants more than mine. Frank's can't keep it together over here. Oh my God. No, we're trying to have a good time. We're trying to lighten the mood here as the Cardinals get whooped it's, uh, uh, Sunday afternoon. Look, it's, it's the first week of the season. I mean, we we already know we we got a uphill. It climb. sucks though, Frank. It sucks. It, it does. Sucks. It does. I mean, you like, want to be able to go to work <clears throat> and 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 meet your friends and be like, yeah, man, my team balled. Look, and you, you we know, can't do that. You know, we you've can't. been talking about the Cardinals. You've been you've been you've man. been talking. Good. But you just been feeling. I've been yeah. feeling good about them. I, I thought I thought. Yeah, but at least I have clarity now. I needed clarity on Isaiah Simmons. Like, hit was Isaiah Simmons going to have a Pro Bowl man. season? I don't he know. still can. I picked Isaiah Simmons as my defensive player of the game. I did too because I, I wanted to will I really into, wanted. Into I really thought yes. that he had a good moment because they said that he had a he had enough time to learn the defense. He was a he was a caller, play caller. They moved growth, him out. Right, they moved right, him in the right growth. spot. Growth would have happened. He had time to become the defensive back or a guy that could literally shut down six tight ends and maybe every now and then you know put some pressure on the quarterback. I was looking forward to it. I didn't see it today. Um, and again. He, his legs looked like they were like they were like new legs out there. Like he didn't have the legs and the stamina. Like he was a baby be, deer, bro. Yeah, like a little baby deer or something. <laughs> baby deer. So, I mean, like it just. But again, that's the NFL, guys. We, I, we, we. Yeah. D and I keep DNA and I keep saying is that you will get exposed. That's the job of your opponent is to expose your weaknesses. And when you have young players out there, that's the job is to expose them. 
And when you have guys that chase and run after the ball, that's why you have to have misdirections. And that's compounded if you can't have any pressure. And it's, it's compounded across yeah. the board. And when you can get pressure yeah. on your quarterback, then you don't have to bring blitzes. The Kansas City Chiefs didn't have to blitz us. And no. like, like we had to Great blitz point, them. Frank, yeah. And Great so that's point. the narrative when you look at your team. So – because they could drop just, people in coverage it's just and just win with four. Right. It's the way the yeah, NFL. It's a great like you, point. Yeah. It, 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 it gets it's pretty some days and it's ugly some days because sometimes that team has your number and then you don't have their number. You don't have a you yeah. can't text them, you can't call them, you can't Google. Block. Hey Siri, you've been blocked. Block. It's horrible. And so and and you know, maybe that's that's something that we can see that will transition. Let's talk to Bo though. Bo Let's talk to Bo. Bo knows Stadium, my co host. Bo knows. The venerable Bo Brock. At State Farm Stadium, we we love him. There he is. Can you hear us, Bo? Can you hear us? We got guys. We, the connection out here. Give us your thoughts the, on the uh, game, Bo Brock. Performance. Yeah, oh, Bo. My, my internet connection out here is worse than the Cardinals' performance today, man. It's, uh, ah, it we was, heard we heard there, that. There, there was, we heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Look, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to, to like about today's game. I and, mean, you know, the Cardinals, the players, coaches, all saying the right things. But, you know, is, is that accountability going to sink in this week? Are they going to be able to kind of learn their lesson from this beating? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, they're just going to have to prove it week two against the Raiders, who played well. They win. But that was a that was a rough start to the season for the Arizona Cardinals, no matter how you look at this one. Well, what did Cliff have to say post game about you know what what how did that transpire? What was his rationale as to why the Cardinals looked that way? And did anybody ask him if it was about the lack of intensity in training camp and in the preseason? Yeah, yeah people were asking about that. I mean, would you have done if would you have gone back and done it differently if you knew this was going to be the result? And he, you know, he back he didn't back off of that. He you know he pretty much was preaching that. He told the guys a simple message: "We got to be better." Um, but you know, I mean, how how far can that go? There, there's not much to that. There's going to have to be more after an ass kick and like this one. Uh, Kyler Murray said they got punched in the mouth, and that they they just you have to respond, right? So um, it, it just looked like a team that wasn't prepared. It was a team that looked like it, it exactly kind of how they went forth with this preseason where they didn't play and they didn't come up ready to play. And, you know, they weren't using any of the injuries that uh, that they had sustained early, the freak accidents that happened. And there's certainly plenty of those. But, you know, they were just uh, – they were overwhelmed today, guys. And I don't know if that word's been used yet today, but overwhelmed by Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, the, the difference between a team where the Chiefs are and the expectations of contending and where the Cardinals are, it, it, there's, a, there's a huge, huge – uh, margin there. And, and Bo, we talk about the Cardinals obviously having an elite quarterback. We saw Patrick Mahomes on display today. What was the biggest disconnect as you talk about, you know, the expectations, right, of the Chiefs? You have yeah. the Cardinals. Today, What's what jumped out to you most about the difference between these two opponents? I mean, there was just, even when the Arizona Cardinals got pressure, Mahomes knew exactly where he was going the football and made plays. I mean, they just couldn't they couldn't generate anything that got him off his game. There were two plays where, you know, it was like Zach Allen got hit for the roughing the passer, which was a little iffy in my opinion, but Isaiah Simmons is hit right between the, the nine for a potential interception there. That was a bad throw, and then he had a bad throw in the end zone that Marco Wilson got his hands on. Uh, but other than that, you know, it was a perfect game for Mahomes and 18 touchdowns now in season openers, 5-0. and The guy's an absolute wagon come week one. But, you know, to, to lose like the Cardinals did, you know, the offense stalled out, stagnant for far too long. Uh, that was supposed to be your calling card this season, to not be able to kind of go tit for tat, missed opportunity at the end of the half, and then the Chiefs able to capitalize on that. I mean, that's there, there's, a, there's a big difference between these two teams. Bo, I want to ask you specifically about Trey McBride did not start, nor was he active for the game. And I saw a yeah. blurb that Cliff just said he just needs to keep going or keep feeling out the process. I, yeah. Why do you think Trey McBride didn't play today? Yeah. Zach Ertz wasn't targeted until the second half, compromised with injury. You know, Trey has more receiving upside than I would argue A.J. Green does at this point, who had two catches for 13 yards. Give us some clarity on why we didn't yeah. see 85 today. Yeah, there's a couple things here, and Howard Balzer, our very talented writer that you can read his work, especially as he recaps this uh, at gophnx.com, has given me insight on, on Zach Ertz, and he admitted that he had the early, early calf injury in training camp. He had a setback to that injury, and then he, uh, 
he was on a kind of a snap count today. So we didn't see a whole lot of Zach Ertz, but still, as you mentioned, Cliff Kingsbury told us that he's still, he's still kind of developing Trey McBride and that they didn't feel comfortable enough to even have him active for this game. They wanted to ride with the veterans and Max Williams. He was a starting tight end. Steven Anderson saw some action. Maybe they just felt more comfortable with them as pass protectors or just blockers in general and just didn't feel comfortable with the rookie. He, you know, he's, he's encouraged, but not enough for the Cardinals' top pick to see action in his first pro game. I mean, that's just completely deflating, you know, to see two of your three top selection, you know, and McBride and on the pass rush side and, and Maje Sanders, you know, 100th overall after Cameron Thomas selected, he didn't even dress either. So it's, it's another – like kind of red shirt game it is we're far too often seeing by Steve Kimes draft classes right now. Terry uh, with the 499 Super Chat. Thank you, Terry. It's absolutely inexcusable. How long are we stuck with Cliff Kime and Kyler? I'm exhausted and just disappointed. Well, let's talk about Kyler Murray, Bill Brock. How did you think the franchise quarterback with his new contract in hand played today? I think by our view, played pretty well, wasn't helped by his teammates, probably would want some throws back, but more good than bad with uh, K1? No, I don't don't think you could ever say more good than bad when you see the final result. And I think Kyler Murray would agree with that. And you look at, like, the total game and you look at the the box score, it's it's not bad, right? I mean, he didn't turn the ball over. They did have the turnover on downs, which was backbreaking at the end of the half where I thought that it was the biggest opportunity for them to kind of get back in this one. Big door balls down. He would have been wide open on that fourth fourth down play. But, no, I think it it was very similar – to last season where the Cardinals were losing football games. But if you look at the box score, like Kyler's numbers are fine. He, he just wasn't, he wasn't capitalizing enough. Like it was a fine game, but the Cardinals can't have fine, especially when they're down as many people and they're going up against an absolute wagon, like the chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Well, hey, but, but real quick, Frank, but I got to ask you two part question. What was most disappointing you know, from this game, a major takeaway we were talking about a little bit earlier, me and Johnny feels as though it's that front seven, you know, second to that, or, you know, first, and that secondary second. And what can fans look at optimistically it being game one and maybe, you know, moving on, that it only being game one, uh, you know, of the season? I, I think that the, the biggest disappointment is there's very high expectations for those first round picks and David Collins and Isaiah Simmons. And there just wasn't any impact plays from those guys. And and they need that. They're going to need that throughout the season. And they just didn't get anything from number nine and number 25. And and that's part of the front seven. It absolutely is. Um, And and as far as the optimism and reason for optimism, I mean, week one is sometimes an anomaly, right? I mean, to kind of, this was a message sent. This wasn't just like, hey, we played well, and, and, and maybe we, we can just kind of get a moral victory. This was an absolute just ass-kicking, and this was a wake-up call for a lot of those guys in this locker room that, hey, you know, preseason was over, and the guys that, hey, they earned a spot, now you've got to start producing. And the guys that didn't play, you know, they didn't come out with, the you know, uh, enough to get anything done or accomplished here. So, hey, we, we have to take this more seriously too. And, you know, and, and is that enough to get them – over the hump to compete with with a improved Raiders team, and then after that, you got the defending world champs. Like, you get punched in the mouth, like Kyler Murray said, and you have to respond. And you know, it starts this this upcoming week for the squad to uh, respond to this this kind of egg that they laid here in Glendale. Bo, the mood in the locker room after the game did it seem like guys were getting dressed and ready to go immediately get out of there, or were they kind of sitting around and brooding a little bit, kind of looking at themselves like, man, this just was a a real, you know, this is not what we thought. Or, or like, you're going to Four Peaks? Or right. Four we, we, we get out of here. <laughs> we out. Let's go to Four Peaks. We out, bro. We got to go wash this down. Take Bring the OG. Bring the OG. Well, hold up. Don't bring the no OG. Yeah, don't, yeah, you can't do that. Bring, bring, bring the medicinal ones. <laughs> There's not enough Redbird lager in that, you know, to kind of help that locker room. No, I think uh, brewing is a, is, a good, is a good way to describe it. You know, your guy, Mark, uh, the junkyard dog, Marcus Goldney, talked to, Our guy Howard, and look, I mean, nobody was sitting around making excuses. Nobody was getting dressed quick enough to get out of there and and kind of avoid having to take their medicine for this one. So at least from that side of them kind of trying to show accountability, sure. But, you know, it's going to come with these next couple days as far as how they prepare for the 
for the Raiders because I think that's the biggest thing is, is preparation, right? Like they're going to have to figure out that the way that they prepared for the season opener wasn't good enough. Now they're going to have to figure out, okay, what's that look like? And they're going to have to do it on the fly. And they're going to have to do it against going against Derek Carr and Devontae Adams and a newly extended Darren Waller. It doesn't get really much any easier going forward. Was Greg Dortch as, as quick as he looked in person? We thought that he, he might have yeah. an opportunity yeah. to shine today. And he was one of the few bright spots, you know, subbing in for Rondell for Moore. Sure. I thought he got really taken on that uh, would-be uh, incompletion that should have been a catch. It looked like a catch on TV. Give me your perception of what is now, I think, the bona fide wide receiver three for the Arizona Cardinals, at least for the time being. Maybe. Bo Brock. Live from State Farm Stadium. All right. Well, while Bo is, is figuring out uh, his internet connection, we're going to tell you about caught. OGs. Go ahead. We got you. Talk, talk to us about Greg Dorch. Greg Dorch looked great. You know, I, I think I think it was probably the right call. Uh, he didn't he didn't control it all the way to ground. Um, but yeah, I mean that doesn't take away from his solid performance. And I like what you said on Friday, like. That needs to be Dorch's job until, you know, Rondell Moore takes it from him eventually if he gets healthy enough to ever do so. I think Greg Dorch was able to parlay a strong training camp in preseason into this performance, and that was one of the few bright spots. I think you have to like what you saw from James Conner early. The yeah. game got out of hand. And, and he I know as well, Bo. From Marquise Brown, Hollywood Brown, and his few opportunities to kind of shine today. So, yeah, I mean, the offense, it wasn't what you wanted completely as a whole, but – uh, there, there are some things to kind of feel optimistic about that they can grow on, grow with. We're going to keep ball around here, but I want to tell everybody about OGs. We have the stuff just for you. We could all use some OGs right about now. Entering the fla uh, Flavoring Life sweepstakes, one winner will receive three, yes, three bags of the precious OGs, including the orange creamsicle, my favorite, tropical flavors, an OG hat, which you can rock, as well as a PHNX shirt of your choice. And get an annual membership at gophnx.com. Sign up at the website. Click the link in the show notes. Check out OGs online at ogbrands.com. And on Instagram at ogbrands. You can also find their products at your local dispensary. However, you got to be 21 and older to purchase. And he just mentioned Hollywood Brown. We've got a new Hollywood Hills t-shirt right now at the PHNX Merchandise Locker. It is the hottest shirt we've got going. There it is. Hollywood sign on Camelback Mountain. This is a brand new release you can get right now, $29.99. Or if you cop that free membership, or excuse me, that new membership, you can get this t-shirt for free from the PHNX Merchandise Locker. Listen, the Cardinals did not live up to the hype today, but Hollywood Brown sure as hell did. Pick up your Hollywood Hills sign on Camelback shirt today. All right, gentlemen, final thoughts from the Arizona Cardinals blistering home defeat against the Kansas City Chiefs. Frank Sanders, where does the team go from here? Uh, they go back to work. Definitely go back to work and do some reevaluating um, on <clears throat> their preparation. And then just kind of, you know, go go back and watch the film because I think there's something, you know, losers get to learn what the winners do well. <laughs> and once fact. you lose the game, lose, I mean, you get a Preach chance on. to go back and watch Preach. what they did Preach well on. against us. And then it also helps you get a chance. To, it exposes you of what your weaknesses are in some areas. Like crossing routes gets you, man, or – not being able to communicate well on the defense when guys are running rub routes against you and guys are running free. How fast do I need to be? Like that speed that's happening on the football field. Like so you need to get your mindset ready, your eyes open, your mind thinking that the game moves this fast because I just seen the elite do it. And so I can't be sitting right here thinking what I'm watching Trace McSorley do at practice and Colt McCoy do at practice. Like this is what we're supposed to be doing. No. So I think they got to go back and learn and look at themselves and man and just say, hey, I got to be better. Because I wasn't my best. I wasn't good. And guess what? They were that much better than me. And so if you do that and you're honest with yourself, you'll practice harder. You'll run extra wind sprints. You'll lift a little more weights. You'll get yourself better in the film room. And if it, and, 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 and then you'll sit yourself around some of the people that, some veterans, and maybe they, they could probably educate you a little bit better on how to prepare, how to practice, what to study for, what little things you're doing wrong with. And when you're doing it, I mean, it, it should make you better, man, because it's a long road to be looking bad for seven, 16 more weeks. Johnny, you, you got to repeat the, the question because Frank talks so damn long. He does. So I forgot. Frank's, I, a, Frank's, I, Frank's very I, passionate. I mean, it was a great game. Yes, so. I'm just saying, I forgot. I for, Bo Brock's I, back. I, I, forgot, I forgot the question. We're doing, we're doing final thoughts here. <laughs> Damian Anderson, if, if you're 
if you're Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> and everybody's getting on your case that you didn't deserve your extension, right? And you got to go on the road and face Josh McDaniels next week. How do you get your team hyped up? Because right now, no one's got a bigger target on his back, I think, than Cliff Kingsbury does. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would be real with the gentleman. I would be like, hey, this, this accountability, this ownership is on you. Every day you have an opportunity to put your resume out for yourself, for your family, for your paycheck, to earn a living. So just like I'm going to do my damn best, I expect you to do the same. And let's go out here and win some football games. But with that, I would just like to uh, prove to myself and, and you, Johnny, as well, that I am the, fo- the superior football mind because I do feel that if the Arizona Cardinals would have had George Karloftis. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> They would have lost. There it even is, worse. They would have. They, they would have. Because they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have had. They wouldn't would have, have had, had pressure. Hollywood, they wouldn't have had Hollywood Brown who scored a touchdown and was moving the so chains. Anybody could have did that. Hollywood Brown. Anybody could have. <laughs> Hollywood Brown had what, Johnny? He had four for forty-three. <laughs> yeah, anybody could have did that. What did Karloftis have? Karloftis is 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 not the problem. Here's the problem. I'm the just. Aris, but Aris, would, would have not honestly, Johnny. Would, would, he, have, would he have even played for Vance Joseph? But would it question. have addressed the problem at least of getting some type of pressure on the quarterback? Well, then who'd be who'd be playing wideout for you right now? Dorch and AJ Green. Come on now. Offensively, give me the offensive player. Here's what the Cardinals okay. need to do. Okay. Bo Brock. They need to get back to basics this week. They. I thought they were going to incorporate Kyler Murray utilizing his legs. I, I think you can exploit the v- Vegas Raiders defense. They're going to know exactly what to do and what not to do, hopefully against Chandler Jones. Bo Brock, how do you get back on track if you're Arizona this week? Hey, pour some out. Pour some Redbird Lager out for the Kyler Murray over rushing yards because it was 36 and a half. He had like 30 by the early in the second quarter, ended it with like 29. Brutal. So that was a bad <laughs> beat for our Kyler Damn. Murray rushing yards. Friends out there. Man, I don't understand yeah, the math. To but go damn. backwards, to go, <laughs> yeah, to go backwards. Yeah, that's, that's a tough beat. No, I yeah. mean, I, I mean, you, you want to see more of what you saw, like as this offense was kind of trending there, and it looked like they were going to cut in the lead. I, I mean, I think absolutely, you, you got the you got the the dogs to be able to do that. Uh, you know, they're going to get healthier. Trayvon Mullen, does he become a part of this defense going forward? I think that's a boost. I liked your tweet, Johnny. I think you know, thirty three year old. Justin James Watt, like, is he going to be the guy that's going to be able to be the savior of the, de- the defense? No, Davis I don't think JJ? that exists. They're just going <laughs> to, they're going to, they're going to have to figure out, you know, what this personnel, how, how they, you know, how they can really impact and, and get this defense off the field. And they were able to do that, you know, after the first three drives, but not enough in the second half. They were just out of gas. Uh, Vance Joseph has got to get into the lab. And you talk about Cliff Kingsbury being in tough spot. Vance Joseph isn't the one that signed the extension. I mean, Vance Joseph right. is going to play uh, at a high level and, and avoid potentially being the scapegoat here. Guys, I think they walk away from this game thinking, thank God we don't have to see Patrick Mahomes every week. We'll see you he, in the playoffs, you know, we, 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 yeah, yeah, we don't have to see Patrick Mahomes every week. Two... Like Frank said, you did learn something. You learned how are we going to manufacture pressure? Because to me, Bo, I don't really think the the cornerback coming back is going to make that big of a difference. Because if you can't get pressure to the opposing quarterback and disrupt his timing and disrupt his cadence and get it, get him uncomfortable, as you mentioned, we didn't see that from Patrick Mahomes. You know, may, maybe he had two bad throws this game, but we didn't see that much of Patrick yeah. Mahomes. He looked very comfortable in the pocket. So unless the Arizona Cardinals defense can do that. It's going to be a long season, and to me, I hope you. I hope JJ is the answer. But to me, if it's if it's not, I want to see it be be able to be done without JJ in the lineup because that's the core of your football team. Billy Davis is the linebacker coach for the Arizona Cardinals. He and Vance Joseph are directly tied to development of Isaiah Simmons <clears throat> and Zayvon Collins. I would think he would be the first domino to fall if the Cardinals were to make any kind of changes. I don't expect them to let to let Vance Joseph go. Uh, I think there's too much respect for him in the locker room, but they need to be better. They haven't been good uh, since probably November of last year. That needs to turn around quick. What also needs to turn around, everybody go to their phone right now. Be sure to subscribe to the PHNX Cardinals podcast. Leave us a five-star review. Give us a comment. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you'd like to see more of. We're here every single day giving out the best, the most premium Arizona Cardinal content. Bull Brock live from State Farm Stadium. 
the great Frank Sanders, the great Damian Anderson, myself, Johnny Venerable here at the PHNX quarter, headquarters in downtown Phoenix. Again, we will be back tomorrow with another show, 4 p.m. live. Thank you so much for everybody tuning in. Things will get better, we promise. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, leave us a five-star review, like this video now, and we'll be back tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thank you.